A couple weeks back, a popular YouTuber tweeted out what they referred to as a rant, saying that people don't appreciate 3D animation within anime, and in fact, that 90% of 2D anime productions are originally made in 3D with 2D animation, quote, painted over. As a source for this, they provided a behind the scenes clip from Yuri on Ice, showing that the animators used 3D choreography as a basis for one of the show's key scenes. The reaction to the tweet was immediate. Animation creators from both Japan and overseas, as well as plenty of fans, chimed in to say that no, 90% of anime is not based on 3D. That YouTuber has since recognised that mistakes were made and apologised for misleading their many fans. But I think this is good. It's unfortunate that the mistake was so public, but making mistakes is an opportunity for us all to learn more, and they were clearly interested in the process. The original myth was interesting, but a lot of the time, the truth is more fun than fiction. That's what Anime Mythbusters is about, taking commonly held ideas, discussing whether they hold any water, and making sure we all learn something interesting from them. So yes, this myth is busted. But let's talk about the role that CG plays in anime anyways. The clip in this myth is a part of a pipeline with many stages designed to help the 2D animators create realistic ice skating, and the best way to portray realism is to start from the start. Reality. For Yuri on Ice, director Sayo Yamamoto worked with several professional figure skaters to create choreography that would be world standard, as well as fit the personalities of the characters. So they would go out on the ice with bands on one arm and one leg, which helps easily differentiate limbs during complex moves, and they just perform. Here's veteran skater Kenji Miyamoto doing exactly that. But as you can see, this footage isn't used as a basis for the 2D, it's a 3D model instead. The most likely reason for this is that whilst you can get an idea of the choreography from this footage, it's a bit distant. Literally. The storyboard called for something intimate, with the camera following Yuri during his performance, and imagine asking a cameraman to get his skates on and get these kind of shots. It's also worth turning your imagination towards how an animator would create a shot like this with just this reference footage. They'd be thinking, okay, so the camera would be over here behind him, so his right arm would be there, and um, then the camera would move there, and then he'd also be... It would become a massive pain in the ass. The whole point of an efficient production pipeline is to reduce the amount of time thinking and increase the amount of time creating. So as a part of this pipeline, a 3D artist would take this reference footage and would focus on probably just one thing, the movements of the performer. All they'd need is a basic model and rig, and then they can make it perform a rough idea of the performance. Then they pick up the storyboards, create a few basic planes for the background, and have the camera move around the subject according to the instructions on the storyboards. The result is what's called previs or previsualization, a rough idea of what the final product will look like. In fact, there's even rumors that the previs for the Yuri on Ice movie will be created by using motion tracking equipment, which will give the animators even more accurate reference material. From here, the animators can use both the original reference footage and the previs to create something that is accurate to the original performance, but also has its own value as an original animation. Because even when previs is being used, it's just a reference. The magic comes later as a result of the animator's technique. All anime is a mix between reality and fantasy. Creators will consult with the real world to get to grips with the basics, but let their imaginations express this in fantastic ways. Sometimes you do need 3D to help prepare for an ambitious piece of animation, but experienced animators have a deep understanding of space reality and fantasy. Even CG heavy studios like Ufotable understand that 2D art is what takes preference. In a recent interview with Anime News Network's Jacob Chapman, producer Yuma Takahashi said that even the CG elements of Demon Slayer are based on hand-drawn work. And that's normal. There's plenty of ways of appreciating 3D work without presuming that its artists are spending all their time on something that will get painted over. Sure, Previs exists, but if we want to show why 3D anime should be respected, then let's just show off some exceptional 3D works.
thanks for watching the Canopy Effect. This type of video is an experiment, so no patrons get charged for it in September, but it still needs your help. For our Mythbusters, we need to have myths. So for now, please send in any misconceptions by direct message to at the Canopy Effect on Twitter. This whole thing is about learning rather than naming and shaming, so there will be no names mentioned in these videos. So feel free to send in anything you see around the web, or your own myths that you're not sure about whether they're true or not, and if you've got any questions about the series, I'll be responding to comments on this video.